Welcome back to Twin Flame Energy Podcast. I am your host, Dominique. And I am AJ. How's it going? We are back. We are back. And as far as everything goes, it has been a while. It has been a while. So this we're going to reflections. Me or for those of you out there, how to see yourself. All right. So we are live today on Twitch and this is pack number 13. And once again, the title is Reflections Part 1, How I See Me or How You See Yourself. Uh, the first article comes from a lot of of this article is what is worth and how to recognize yours. if we sound a little lackluster, um, we actually took a nap. So I don't know how coherent my co-host is currently. What? Just in advance. Moving right Seriously? along. <laughs> I'm fine. Do you hear the animosity? I can feel it. Can you hear it? Moving right along. Self-worth is simply defined as the level of importance you place on yourself. It's an emotional outlook that determines how and what you feel about yourself in comparison to other people. Self-worth is a fundamental part of our being and it controls the way we see ourselves. Everything we see excuse me, everything we think about, all the emotions we feel, and even the way we act is a product of value that we place on ourselves and on others. Self-worth is an entirely sensitive topic. So here are a few things, um, in terms of steps of how to recognize. All right, so. Four factors that define self-worth. One, sphere of contact. Many times people are weighed or weigh themselves numbers of close to and you know. Number two, physical emotional appearance. Ourselves passing judgment just by regarding a person's outward look, what they wear, how they speak, and how society feels about them. Three, occupation. This is another yardstick that people serve. Someone to a waiter and friendly to a doctor. For example, they feel that the latter is more successful than former. Career choices often add positivity or positive or negative importance to one's life. Number four is possessions. This is used to measure self-worth. It can be anything from the size of your paycheck to the kind of number of cars you own. It is usually material assets. So the question is, in which way do you insert your And you're asking me. Obviously. <laughs> Um, insert my independence in our like the time that I spend focusing on self, pretty much, right? I guess so, or yeah, okay. So, I will say when I, um, when I take the time, you know, do things outside, you know, like if I'm doing. Um, other music stuff on the side or if I'm um, even just taking time to like meditate or if I'm taking time to even just play a game just to kind of just relax you know those are, those are times where I just take time just for myself mm -hmm. you know yeah and how would you classify or gauge your self-worth um it, I mean for years it hasn't been any for me but it's something that I'm working on, you know, mm -hmm. I'm trying to get better at it and I'm on it. And I'm really just learning how to acknowledge where 
and how to identify that self-worth is even being used or not being used or what it even is. So you'll do something and you'll be like, is that not caring for myself or is that something, you know, that I should or should not focus on is really identifying when those things occur that you're like, okay, I need to really figure out what self-worth actually means. And I guess I may be speaking for other people out there, but you know, it's really what that is. And they don't even know how to identify it sometimes. I know that was my, my thing is like, I didn't even know like, Oh, you're supposed to do this for yourself. Oh, you know, but yeah. Well, there's a, a list of things that worth is not. Self-worth is not your career, your accomplishments, your age, your love life, your grades, your health status, your finances, your preference, or self-worth only just about you. So, mm -hmm. anything other than yourself. Um... I, I'm trying to figure, I don't know. <laughs> I don't and you're know. not what, what? talking about music, you're not talking about a video game, uh -huh. you're not talking about any of the stuff that you do. Right. Do you have any self-worth? That's, I guess that's it. Where you're like, I, I, you don't, you don't, I don't know. You know, how would you answer these questions? How would I Because all the this? questions are going to me. <laughs> personally like it will help someone who can't identify what self-worth is fully for someone who doesn't have that issue mm -hmm. answer those same questions what is and what is not self-worth so for me any and everything i may desire i'm not only capable of i deserve to have and i'm breathing Mm -hmm. That's my self worth. Okay. So my very existence makes me entitled to whatever it is that I desire. Once it becomes a desire, that means it's meant for me. Now the real question is, how do you create that if you've never had it? That I know. That's the real question. That's the question that I think that comes with maturity. I have. I personally believe that that comes with maturity. And how do you gauge maturity on knowing self-worth more? I think pride or like the outcome matters more than, let me say, I don't want to say the journey. The journey matters. It is about the journey. It is the outcome and the journey itself matters to you than how uncomfortable you're going to be on that journey, how you may look while you're doing the thing, come minor to the goal that you're setting or the thing that you want to start doing, maturity has jumped in. When you're still focused on how something looks or how you'll be perceived by others or that you'll be uncomfortable, that's when you're still in an immature space. Mm hmm Okay. So. So, all right, the second article. Uh, Ideas.ted.com. <laughs> the title of the article is Five Ways to Build Lasting Self-Esteem. Number one, use positive affirmations correctly. Identify your competencies and develop compliments <laughs> self-criticism and introduce <coughs> self-compassion number five affirm your worth these are good like good points mm -hmm. now the question is do you have any specific rituals you use to build your self-esteem um my skincare Stuff like that. Yeah, you be on that every night. You definitely be on that. On yeah, top of when it. your skin glows, you feel better about yourself. I tried 
try to. Sometimes. <laughs> I just, you Do know, you have yeah. any specific rituals, rituals that you use to build your self-esteem? <laughs> I I I do um meditation I'm trying to um implement uh, uh Do you think meditation is self esteem builder? Well, it's what I do during my meditation. Mm -hmm. And I'm trying to implement the affirmations you know mm -hmm. um during my me meditations, but good points that I'm going to be looking at mm -hmm. because these are all things that you know it's like I, I, I can't connect with self-compassion I just cannot connect with that I try trying to you know what I mean I'm trying to sit in the and say something just because to see if I feel that so you're saying you have no compassion for yourself well I'm, saying? I'm saying I'm trying to you know you know but I'm saying it's not like in in nature Right, right. And exactly what I mean. Like, I think these are, this is really good because this is a true issue that I have, but I not be the only person that feel that way where it's just, I can't connect like that to those kinds of things where I'm like, like, no, I need, and I have to, and I got, to, you know what I mean? Those people where it's like, I just, I just, it's just not possible for me to just feel that way. You know what I'm saying? And I'm really trying to be like, okay, no, I deserve, like you said, you said deserve that I deserve that. I just do, you know, mm -hmm. and just trying to feel that and really, really acknowledge it. You know? Well, I don't think it's ever been a thing that people encouraged you know there's so much you always you're selfish you always think of your you yeah. got a lot of people who are being leaking wounds trying to make change and but you have to take care of yourself first you say put the mask on yourself before the person next to you if you're in a plane and the plane starts to go down because right. if you're depleting you can't help anybody else right right but in society that's never been that's that's like some new within the last five years thing uh, love no no not that but th that's always been around but mm -hmm. people never understood what it you mean you mean utilizing that in life yeah self-love right self-care self-care was not the word self-care didn't exist before five years ago you know so that is, and and uh, somebody was saying today was talking about um, how, to be honest, like nowadays they're acknowledging a lot of different things that we just want to accept and and really acknowledge that that is an issue, like mental health issues and mm -hmm. things like that. Like that, you know, people are acknowledging it, and it's imperative and important that we do, and that also goes with in self worth as well just good that it, you know this trying to connect with that mm -hmm. well the third article comes from wholelifechallenge.com and the article is entitled the 10 thought habits of people with high self-worth mm. so number one is no matter what or haven't done i'm worth Number two, my things, my things do not define me. I am allowed to feel whatever I am feeling. Number four, I do in the joy of missing out. Number five, it's not about what happens. It's about what or how I respond to what happens. Mm -hmm. I do what I love and I love. Seven, I see myself in others. I believe in something greater than myself. Number nine, I find things to be grateful for. And number two, I tell myself or about my life means everything. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the, the some of these, like, 
I can I can I I can identify with. I will say that that, that I can really identify with that. Um. So, worthy thoughts. Take worthy action. Self worth checklist. <laughs> So number one is eat healthy food, <laughs> exercise, um, lightly decline invitations to events that you have no interest in attending, minimize your alcohol intake, get a massage, write in a journal, state affirmations to yourself in the mirror, be aware and cut back on how many things you say the words, I'm sorry, ask for help, meditate. Listen to treat yourself to something you love to do. Learn something. Do something that takes you out. Be confident in your own thoughts, feelings, and opinions. And then practice the fine art of letting go. Yep. I think those are advantageous in terms of if you're doing all of those things, it'd probably be really hard to not have self worth. Yeah. Because you take a lot of time to like if you're seriously like like seriously eating healthy food, exercising, you're not interested in minimizing your alcohol intake, getting massages, writing in journals, meditating, asking for help, mm -hmm. listening to your favorite music. Mm -hmm. There's no way in hell just, you, you'd have to work real hard. Mm -hmm. That's just, you know, my personal thoughts on that. But anyways, we're going to take a quick music break real quick. Get ourselves some, got a little cough here on the side, but we'll back from the break in just a moment. To be 
entitled private time by vapors ever so fitting available music all right so it's about that time uh for the book of the month if you one flame energy 11 energy 11 <laughs> as you should be you missed the announcement that the book of the month to a different and Dom will explain that. Yes. Intuitive and a big part of how we roll around here. And so have a little bit of a story time <laughs> to talk about the book. So the original book that we were going to read, I decided to, you know, save a little money. The book was like 15 bucks on Amazon. So I was like, okay, let me go ahead and order on eBay. Found one for four. I ordered it. <laughs> came so excited to start reading during our. You know kind of get ahead of the game i open up the book there's a paper from a pharmacy from someone there's a picture of the previous owners and there's a piece of food in the book that book in which i didn't even go near the book and so something in me just would not allow me to read this book so i did some googling and i found the book that we've currently landed on right now and i'm so very happy i've switched not only is the book amazing <laughs> but there's no and i think i'm switching to e and i've switched ebooks now <laughs> so you know i love books turning pages yeah but i'm scared straight now so that was the story time <laughs> so the book that was hilarious it is called married roommates how to go from a relationship that just survives to a marriage that thrives. Mm -hmm. There are 238 page parts, nine chapters, and we you chapter kind of a chapter. A week. So today we'll be chatting about chapter one. Um, part one is called marriage, the missing owner's manual. Chapter one is called a marriage drift. So let's dive right in. Go. So chapter one starts with a little bit of story time about a couple named Josh and Tammy. So the road ahead, Josh was elated. He finally asked her and she said, yes, it took months to plan the perfect proposal to get her family in on it and to buy her the ring she wanted. It was still racing, but it swelled with love and pride. <clears throat> five years of dating they were finally getting married hours later lying in bed together tammy's eyes still sparkled as she excitedly laid out plans for the wedding they didn't sleep much that night talking for hours about their future dot 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 let's go five years later as the day came to a close and josh still didn't say anything tammy realized that he forgot it was their fifth wedding anniversary, and there was no gift, no card, no acknowledgement. Fallen. 
Josh had all of celebrations, so his forgetfulness about her was particularly hurtful. She thought back to his evil, which involved all of her and seemingly half their town. He used to always be so over the top, but times definitely changed. Tammy glanced over at Josh sofa and could sad. They had so many dreams. Once she knew, once she now knew what never happened. In those fantasies, he was going to open a restaurant. She was going to be the head chef. That never happened. These days, he still worked for his uncle. She had to go back to work part time at a preschool after their son was born. Money was all right. There were months where it was sad that she had to ask her parents for help. Life didn't mirror their expectations, and they blamed it on each other. So, thoughts on that? <laughs> uh, it's just uh, interesting. Hmm. <laughs> well, at the end of the day, they're blaming each other because they both see what the other person's not doing. Right. Right. So, um, so one thing: functional and emotional partnership. The day-to-day reality of marriage forms a functional partnership, which joins the existing emotional one. The emotional bond is fueled by the love, fun, excitement, and sexuality between, while the functional one is the logical, realistic mechanics on top of making one another feel loved and connected, marriage means that the couple now have to contend with the big ticket items such as financial pressures, health management, retirement planning, as well as mundane functions like utility payments and food shopping. Mm -hmm. The reality of creating a budget, taking out the trash or dealing is considerably less exciting and sexy. Although (laughs) the functional side of marriage must be managed or else the emotional side often gets by the busyness of life. It is seen more as a luxury. If there is time, which then upsets the balance of the two, the emotional and the functional need for a happy marriage. Mm-hmm. All right. The functional partnership starts a process in which you become increasingly dependent on one another for the ongoing while it is initially exciting to build your home life and routines around the one another as you settle in time and regular into a routine norm the dictionary defines functional as intensity practical Active. An interesting definition considering that married roommate, the function, the functional begins to overtake the emotional and with time may be the only part of the partnership that survives. Simple acts such as speaking to one another while multi gives you have the ability to be present with each other. So does eating in front of the TV, letting phones interrupt your time together and then going to sleep at different times. We see this process play out with our clients all the time. Priorities just naturally shift. Abilities get prioritized over fun. Work becomes more important than efficiency overtakes quality. And we compartmentalize the good and zero in on the bad. The reality of the marriage usually leads couples to do an admirable job of maintaining the functional part of the relationship the emotional connection stalls get so busy taking care of building and um, upholding the of your life that you often don't do as good of a job of taking care of each other or for the matter even yourself in the beginning of the relationship feeding your connection effortless fueled the excitement of a shared attraction new work hard to understand one another to be supportive and complimentary 
So conversations have become mostly a means of information sharing instead of an interested chatter. Interactions would have formerly been flirty and fun, uh, have becoming more nonsense to do lists and don't forget reminders connection and passion between two people get absorbed in next of daily living interactions are devoid of connections moments and the everyday op of living together becomes the essence of the relationship that's how married roommates <laughs> So I think this is a really good introduction into this one is a really great introduction to the book exactly where we're going to go with it. I have already read ahead I'm on chapter three, so I already have everything like rolling in my head. Some of the chapter one takeaways. Um, the first one is the reality of marriage does not always meet the expectations, hopes and dreams that you had going into it. Many times we are blindsided by the fantasies in our head future that it's hard to see that we are romanticizing marriage and our partner. Joining two lives is hard because we go into it unprepared. We don't create two separate lanes, functional and emotional. Responsibilities and duty overpower and rob us of the light intimate moments of our connection these increasing demands can take you from being a young carefree fun loving to a busy rushed one where responsibilities fully get prioritized over time together the emotional connection dwindles because we stop putting in what we naturally did at the onset of the relationship our energy to intent and time together to be taken over by the functional conversations become logics, responsibility, which muscles out our connection. Few couples are able to maintain the initiality of a relationship over the long haul, not because it is impossible, but because they don't try as hard as they did in the beginning. Practicing prevention through the maintenance will go a long way towards preserving the end and create a protected couple's entity that is now being rewrapped to a function into the functional stressors of life. So next week we will review chapter two, which is called Life. I already read the chapter and it is said. If you are following along with we'll be reviewing that chapter next week, so definitely give you time to digest chapter one and to and reflect on the information that we have received. Yep, yep. So alrighty, it is time for pick a card, any card. <laughs> we have switched up the deck for the week. So we will be um, and and self-love additions cards yeah the and like mm -hmm. <laughs> um they are purple for coding purposes and the card cards we do today that we have picked for this week is all right the first card is what <laughs> I can't breathe. <laughs> the first card is what do I about myself? Ask yourself. Uh, what do I miss about myself? I miss the skinnier version of me. <laughs> and <laughs> yeah, the skinnier younger version. I think everybody says that. Everybody feels that way. Um, I would say. Uh, it's it's a few things, but yeah, the skinnier version was definitely a good one. That's a good one. <laughs> All, All right, right, we're gonna pick one card. Let's Next see. card. All right. And what is life about for me right now? Hmm. Success. That's all that matters to me right now. 
Yeah. Yeah. I feel like my life has looked the same. Less successful every year. So for the first time, I want to go forward, not back. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Moving forward, moving upwards, more positive direction, stability. Mm-hmm. That's, that's definitely one. <laughs> I will say that today's podcast is definitely a lot shorter than some of the other ones that we've done. But no worries about that. It's funny. Yeah. It's, it's, it's kind of going with the more. fact of just how we're feeling. I didn't realize. No, it's only been 35 minutes. I, I follow the clock the entire time. It's all good. Um, because we're back. Yeah. So that does it for this week's podcast. And we will be back next Wednesday streaming live um, on Twitch at 10 p.m. All of the articles used today. We'll drive to school. <laughs> it's going to be all right. Look, we can't even read anymore. Uh, <laughs> all of the articles used today. It's going to be okay. For all the- nope, I've got it. All of the articles <laughs> discussion forward. Can- box as well as links to the book of the month. Yeah. Married roommates. Yeah. How- Excuse me. How do I can't even read. See, How to go. Let me take back over. A relationship that just survives to a marriage that thrives by Tell and Alan Wagner. Thank you so much for tuning in oh, today's podcast. Name. Yes, it is. Mm. Check out our Instagram at Twin Flame Energy Eleven. Find out next week's podcast discussion topic on there. I'll be posting it this week. Be make sh- make sure to like, comment, share, subscribe. Also, sh- also, sh- uh, Twitch too. I have um, no clue about Twitch, yeah, to on, be honest. Uh, yeah, Twin Flame Energy Podcast. I'm Twitch ignorant. Uh, yeah, just Twin Flame Energy Podcast. And uh, that's it. And um, on Facebook, too. Twin Flame Get Energy. Get a good night it. rest, people. Take Drink your water. Do everything you need to do for yourselves this week so that we can start next tomorrow and getting things done. Yep. <laughs> and share. Subscribe and of course, ignite, ignite your energy. energy.